because your music is such an influence on your art, how did you get into making the music that you make? Okay, New Orleans Heritage. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were people who were entertainers on my mother's side. Um, the African Methodist Episcopal Church in Nashville, Tennessee. Choir members mm -hmm. around that. I grew up in Nashville. Uh, and let's say that in the 60s, along Jefferson Street, you had all of these venues. The Club del Morocco, that's where Jimi Hendrix played with the Heisman Brothers and Ike and Tina Turner. Uh, Little Richard. B.B. King, Bobby Blueland, John Lee Hooker, all these people would come to Nashville. And in the course of your weekend, you had like, to, uh, to see all the great ones. I grew up in that. The African drumming, per se, when I first heard African drum in St. Louis, with a master named Mo Chong, I heard this sound. I said, oh, <clears throat> what is that? And he came to me and he looked at me, but I ain't been the same since. Okay. <laughs> I pursued that sound and pursued that over the years. I didn't understand it at first, but I said, this is this feels good to me. This is this is in me. And so over the years I played in bands, I studied with Master Alatunji, Baba Tunde Alatunji, the first master from Nigeria to come to the United States in 1944. And he taught us about respect for others, courtesy, kindness, and to uplift each other. And he said, oh, you can be good at drums, but hey, you gotta make sure you treat people right. So we had life lessons from Baba. Along the way, I mean, I spent six years with the Whalers in, in, in Tidewater in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, uh, Taj Mahal and all, I mean, great musicians. So with them, so I've learned from I'm gonna learn, so I'm always a student of this, so mm -hmm. on the job training. So Odetta, who's from the 60s, she was folk singer with Harry Belafonte. I played with her in Cambridge, England. Mm -hmm. Dr. John. I had one major teacher, Gloria Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Gloria passed at age 86. She was in Corcoran in the Hirshhorn. Mm -hmm. She had, you know, showed the Hirshhorn. She taught art in Africa through the State Department for like 10 years. And she was a drum student of mine and she, she had a wrist injury so she couldn't drum mm -hmm. she said well come by and see me anyway i said okay she said have you ever thought about painting i said well i have a dream about it but i'm like i'm kind of not i'm cautious of that cautious of that mm -hmm. so had, she said let's lay out a canvas and you take some colors and think about your music she said think of the colors we put some African drumming on for Mr. Alatunji, my teacher. And pretty soon I studied with her for every Wednesday for almost about a year and a half, except mm -hmm. the holidays. And I just sit and she wouldn't necessarily say what to do, mm -hmm. but how to. She would say, well, does, is that wall worthy to you? Do you feel, how do you, she would ask me how I felt about it. I said, well, I'm still trying to figure out my feelings. She said, well, don't, don't rush it. She said, think less. Mm -hmm. That was, she said, think less. He said, don't paint. He said, try to paint. And I didn't know what that meant for a while. I said, don't paint, just try to. Mm -hmm. And then if you keep trying, then will you be painting while you're trying. But don't say, I'm going to paint. Keep trying to paint. Mm -hmm. Miles Davis, the great Miles Davis, would say, don't play the song the same way twice. Oh, a lot of music I learned. Along the way, I've learned to listen. Really listen, I'll go back to Miles Davis because that's what can I say, but he often talked about space and rest in the music. So for instance, if I just stop talking for just a second here. Music is art and art is music, if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. there's rhythm involved with either process. That's the key there. Um, with drums, tap, 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 tap. But with art, you gotta have a pulse also. Mm -hmm. You know, the color starts flowing and you don't have to think as much. You, it, you let it talk to you some, you see, instead of telling it what to do. Does that make sense? Always remember, I never know quite what I'm doing, but I'm gonna keep trying to get it right. 
So right. this is really something where, you know, you this is something that you can kind of take your experiences and you can put that on the canvas and it, it's an object that exists and then your music you see is more of a, it, more people being involved. There you go. So see? this is just Daryl in the canvas, mm -hmm. you see. When there are people, it's the way, you know, that emotion and the, the love and the joy and, you know, the human experience. You know, some back and forth between the musician and the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, painting, in the very beginning for me, I didn't know how physical this process could be. Because I would start in six hours. Mm -hmm. When I was much younger, <laughs> eight hours. Can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Now it's about an hour and a break. So I try to preserve, you know, my, my physical self also. <laughs> cause it's demanding, you know. This is like a blank surface and all of a sudden okay here we are but i have to remember to have order around me to paint mm -hmm. the studio the rest of the house even this four or five rooms away mm -hmm. you gotta have order around me mm -hmm. so i don't have to think about anything but that at the time you could tell me a little bit about the paintings that you've been doing during this period of isolation when everybody is kind of at home they're in their own space but for an artist that's an opportunity to really explore your practice and what drives you to paint and make the work that you really want to make and it's a chance for introspection the availability of having time to paint so yeah this has allowed me to do a lot of art i think about 10 paintings thereabouts mm -hmm. to be good and um it's just it's, it's been a bit of a blessing in, 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 in ways that I have this freedom mm -hmm. and I can still work at home as a musician and still paint. Mm -hmm. Some paintings are 90% done, some are like 80% done. They're waiting, so they're always waiting. So this one has been with me for a while and I'm thinking of the detail of it now, what I'll be doing next. But I'll go to sleep thinking of these details. Mm -hmm. But I may not get to them tomorrow or the next day, but it's always a process mm -hmm. for me. And speaking of process, you've been able to kind of experiment and change some of the ways that you yeah. work during this time as well. Yeah, I uh, worked with brown paper, for instance, on this one. You kind of raise relief in each figure. You know, it has its own representation. I love the little fellow with the kite over here on that far end. And each figure, uh, the debate was to put faces on them. Mm -hmm. Let them speak without that baby. Because we got this going on out here. Uh, and it was an experiment on how to balance color. And you know, each painting is a little different for me. Each painting is a lesson. Mm -hmm. The creative life, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's not that easy to achieve or to maintain, shall mm -hmm. I say. Two disciplines per se, three really, mm -hmm. is the music, the teaching, and the performing. Mm -hmm.